or be too afraid to resist. Palestinians have fought back. For decades, they tried to achieve national liberation through armed struggle. Some groups still do. But the majority now support a popular protest instead. The deeply harmful pattern of control, repression, and violence profoundly harms Palestinians living under occupation and Israelis living as occupiers. This must be broken to reach a peaceful and secure future for both peoples. Now that you understand the problem, what about the solution? What about peace talks? So far, over two decades of U.S.-backed peace talks have actually made things worse by helping Israel continue the occupation. It's been years of talking while Israel massively expanded the Jewish settlements and literally redrew the map. Peace talks are good if they're real, but not when they're theater to cover a land grab. So now what? The current world superpower, the United States, has been a terrible friend, enabling Israel's destructive and self-destructive expansion onto Palestinian land by funding the Israeli military, the biggest recipient of U.S. foreign aid in the world. But there's another superpower that can make the difference, you. There's a movement with hundreds of thousands of people just like you across the world, including Palestinians and Israelis, protesting, educating, divesting, and boycotting, all to bring nonviolent international pressure on Israel to stop violating human rights of Palestinians. Throughout history, where governments have failed to push for justice, people just like you, like us, have taken the lead and won. Now it's the Palestinians' turn for freedom and justice. We can pressure Israel to end the occupation and the discrimination. We want all people, Jews and Palestinians, to have equality, human rights, and democracy. We can change history. Join us. Welcome back to Philippines Uncut. I'm Buddy Kunana. Tonight's topic is the Israeli-Palestinian uh, controversy conflict. And uh, joining us still is Jamal Ashley Abbas, who is a professor, professor a lecturer of FU in Fiati, and Hans Palacios, former student union leader of Richmond University in London. So, very powerful cartoon. You know, it's an animation, but it really gets down to the heart of, of the matter. And, um, you know, I, 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 I was shocked by that, that statement, I mean, I mean, by that statistic, that Israel is actually the biggest recipient of U.S. Over three Eight. billion, three yeah. billion. And they've received over 150 billion so far. Yeah, I think the, uh, my figures are right. Now, that clip came out probably in the internet. Yes, from YouTube. It's, it's not, it didn't come out in the mainstream media, mm. and they're still fighting. But the beauty of this is that a lot of people are looking at the internet. Now you have Jews, actual Jews, who are coming out and expressing their disgust over what's going on. And they're posting it on the internet. You've got lectures going all over the place, and you're getting support from rabbis in the New York, yep. in Holland, in <laughs> London. They're all post protesting what's going on in, in Gaza. So we're now having an awareness of what's going on, and hopefully people will be uh, interested enough to really find out for themselves, do the research, and not rely on other what they've been fed by the mainstream yeah. media. Yes. We, we also saw uh, part of the clip mentioned the, the peace process. Uh, Jamal, you've been following this issue for a long time. Uh, is that, was, that, was that the depiction of the peace process, the, the very pessimistic depiction? Is that, is that uh, what, what you think uh, of it as well? well? I think the peace process is just a time where they agree to disagree. But really? was anything accomplished? Nothing was accomplished. Not, nothing much, really. Well, in the first place, buddy, if you have a peace process, presumably there are two countries warring against each other. It's one country against an oppressed. That's that, that they're they're just making. This is all a show. This is all a show. And meanwhile, apparently, I mean, uh, the Israeli government has been building settlements. Yes. In in in, in the strip. So you know, I I, I read somewhere uh, this very famous personality. I just escapes me now who he, who, who he is. Um, but <coughs> he said something like this. He said the. Peace negotiate the peace uh, discussions or, or negotiations between the two sides. It's like dealing with someone or negotiating with someone over a pizza, while the other party keeps eating the pizza. <laughs> but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there is no more pizza left. So yeah. is, is that correct uh, yeah. depiction of what's happening, Hans? Yeah, basically because uh, these guys are down on the ground. There's no way, nowhere for them to go. You have no options for them. By the time they allowed Arafat to. To, to the peace, to, to, to discuss things. The whole area was already developed 
Where are you going to put the Palestinians now? It'll be moot. It'll be moot in academics. Yes. What see? for? They anyway? delayed it for so long. See, now here in our Christian world, our perception is it is the promised land and all that. But if you take religion aside and see what is going on in this situation, you're going to you're going to see that whatever we learn as Christians has been violated. Alam mo, Hans, that's a big problem really for Filipinos to get over it. And I like what you said. I mean, remove religion from the equation. View this as a secular problem, as a human problem. And I'll tell you, on Facebook, I have a, a Facebook friend, and she actually, when I, I posted about this, I said I'm, I'm shooting a show now about uh, the Israeli-Palestinian controversy, conflict, and to shed light on this matter. And she actually said, but, but uh, the Bible promised, or, but, the God, but, but God, uh, Israel was promised to, to the Jews by, by God in the Bible. So, I mean, it goes back to, to that. The, the, the people are approaching this with, uh, with some sort of religious uh, view. Yeah, that, that, that is what they're, they, they're, it always boils down to because that is what's ingrained. It, it's also uh, all, all the, what they call is the, what we grew up with. But if you look at the real situation, when they returned in 1947, who returned? They weren't Jews who, who left in the first place. It was the Palestinians who left. Besides, no, no. Palestine was, uh, I mean, Canaan was promised to the Jews of at that time, not to the present Jews. This present okay. Jews. Jews. Okay, let's talk about the Jews of that time. We're talking about what? Uh, how many? We're talking 2, about... 2,000 years ago, two, two, no, no, 3,000 no. years ago. The ones who came, the ones who were persecuted in Europe, were from a tribe called the Khazarians, okay. who in the year 700 AD converted to Judaism. And then they spread... These are the ones that you're talking, Shylock and all that. That, that was the type of Jew that was going around in Europe. And then... They, they decide to come back to, to Palestine. This is not the original. The original Jews, there, there were a lot of original Jews in, in, uh, in Palestine. Who were living time. in harmony in with, who the, are living in, uh, we with the Palestinians. We even have footage of 1896, 1898. There, there are videos of that. There, you can see it. Search for it in the internet. It's crazy, Jamal. I mean, the two people who have lived together, as you said, since the Middle Ages, since the time of the Crusades, they lived together in harmony, working together, even fighting foreign invaders together. And then now with the creation of this, of the, of this state, uh, all of a sudden find themselves uh, at, the, at, at the end of each other's rifle. Yeah, it's because there, it's another group of people who came in. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Who, now, who calls themselves Jews. Mm. They, they, they come in, they kick, people were literally kicked out of their homes, Palestinians were kicked out of their homes, and then uh, uh, resettler, settlers put, put in their place. And then what happens to the Palati Palestinians who were kicked out? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I just want to say that uh, without the American support, there is no Israel. In uh, 1972 war, when uh, uh, Sadat and, uh, you know, declared a war and yes, the Arab attacked, uh, nations, yeah. Yeah, attacked uh, Israel, they almost defeated Israel. But Henry Kissinger was a Jew and the uh, Secretary of State was jumping up and down and crying there and insisted that there's a daily uh, lifts, air lifts of uh, guns, ammo, everything to Israel. Daily, the you know the Hercules uh, yes, yes, airplanes yes. were landing all the uh, I, I think even people troops, and that's why Sadat in his memoir said, "What is this? We are not fighting Israel. America. Yeah, we're fighting we, America. We are fighting now, America. Why is America so so? I mean, you know, I mean, it came to be a bastion of human rights and all that. And how come you know they're they're, they're turning a blind side? What's going on here? How come the support for for Israel is so strong because from, from America?" <laughs> The American government, the Congress and the Senate has been lobbied very heavily into by the Christian Zionist movements who are there. And uh, it's, 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 no, it's no what you call this, it's no secret now. You, you can research it, how many times they tried to bring the Egyptians into the, to the, the Arabs into the equation. Uh, I'll state w one incident. In, during the Six Day War, uh, the USS Liberty was attacked. It's a, a, a a spy ship, which was just off the Mediterranean, off uh, Israel, and it was attacked by Israeli air force. It practically sank, and uh, the U.S. Uh, White House said yeah. nobody salvaged, yes. nobody saved them. They were going to pin that on the Egyptians, so that there was a re there would be a reason for the Americans to come in. Luckily, that that didn't happen. They found they knew it that you know the at at uh, Magalagal, who was head who was the head of the boat knew what was going on and up to the, his dying day he, he was saying we were betrayed yeah. so there were so many inst instances where they're trying to bring uh, the Americans into it so that uh, they can win the war for them yeah. uh, Jamal you've been following this issue I mean um, 
what do you think can be, how will this resolve? How will, what, what's, the, what, what's the way out? I mean, uh, is it going to be war? I mean, like, I mean, we all want a peaceful way out. What, how, can, how can peace be achieved? The, 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 the video said pressure, pressure in Israel. I there, mean, there's an Israelized historian, Ilan Pape, and uh, he's, a, he's a very objective historian, and he tells us he's what... He's Jewish. The, he's Jewish, and uh, he tells us what really happened then. And he thinks, he says, as a, as a, as a Jew, as an Israeli, the only thing is there should be a regime change. It means the Zionists should be kicked out. No, but uh, I mean... The Zionists, not yeah, the Jews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jews can come in yes, and yes. have a real democratic uh, uh, negotiations with the, with the Palestinians in Palestine. Yes, yes. The Jews, not the Zionists. Who are extreme. They, they are the extreme, uh, the, the extreme right. I no, mean, they're the ordinary Jews. I mean, the Zionists I mean, are the, the extreme Zionists, right? yeah. 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 And they are the ones who control <coughs> Jew, uh, Israel right now. How do you think, Hans, this whole, this whole thing will pan out, this whole drama we're seeing now? Well, are you optimistic? that? <laughs> I, I, I feel that all of us will have to intervene one way or the other. There's the same way, like a few days ago, Obama wanted to, to put a, an embargo on Russia because of one plane. You know, he's, now they're talking about embargo. <laughs> You're talking about over 1,200 dead, so already. far yeah. dead, just a couple of days in one day, 100, and then no embargo going on. Yeah, See? yeah. And then ma does it make sense? It doesn't does make sense, sense. Yeah. And, and it's all because we, we, we perceive that this is all what's being caused by Hamas. Hamas is a little, you know, it's just a political group. It's not the Palestinians, it's just, a, it's... It's Katipunan. We, we went up against the Americans at the time. Yeah. And the whole Philippines has to suffer because one group of Andres Bonifacio and all of these other freedom fighters went up against the Americans. That's what's going on. Yeah. Guys, we have to, unfortunately, we've run out of the show again. I mean, with a topic like this, there's so much to talk about. But quickly, before we go, last words from Jamal. Well, it's very important for people to analyze what's going on. You, you know, media is so ubiquitous nowadays. And it's very important that uh, you just don't uh, swallow everything. You analyze, because once you analyze, your brain gets involved and you can think. You can think of the framing. How is it framed? Is it pro this, pro that? And how, how, how things are arranged? You know, so and remove religion from, from your thinking, no? When uh, you do it. It doesn't matter as long as, for me, it's if you read, if you read properly, if you can read the images, you can read properly, then uh, everything will come out. Truth Good. will emerge. Thank you. Hans, last words? I, 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 I'm going to give people some homework first. You've got to start somewhere to find out where the truth is coming out. So I'm going to ask you people to look at the internet. Go to your YouTube and bear in mind these two names. Uh, one is Miko Peled. Miko, M-I-C-K-O, Peled, P-E-L-E-D. He's now doing a lecture circuit. He really recently did one in Switzerland. He's a Jew. His father was a general during the 1947 campaign, they removed him because he wanted to, to after the se Six Day War, he wanted to for, uh, broker the peace and he had the solution to it. So and Nico Peled? Okay. Nico Peled and the other one is Efran Efrati. He's a, a Jewish uh, soldier also and he talks to you about the, the, the dark side of all of this. You can get that in the, in the internet. These are Jews already talking about what's going on. See, these are a new generation of Jews who cannot stomach what's going on. And they're now going to give you the, the point of view of a Jew, not of uh, an Israeli, not, or, uh, not of a Palestinian, not of an Arab. Not, these are Israelis we're talking speaking about. about speaking about against the about carnage. What's speaking, going on, the genocide yes. that's going on, and what drives the, what's the driving force behind this. See, So people here in this country hopefully will begin to understand yes. why it is not as simple as they think. It's not as simple as... A promised land. Excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, Jamal, thank you for your time. And Hans, of course, thank you very much for coming to the show. And I hope that this show has been very enlightening for the people watching and have now better a grasp and idea of what's really going on. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again here on the show for a follow-up on this topic. Thank you. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. And I hope that all of you are more enlightened on what's going on in the Gaza Strip and uh, what's going on between Israel and Palestine. Join us again next week here in the show where we talk about matters to you because you guys matter the most. I'll see you next week.